are now live. This is We're the live? We Are Live. All right. I like this. We have uh, nine episodes. This is number nine. Eight has been in the books. It's the last one. Might be between 2023, 2022. Yeah. So we did nine episodes in 2022. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> I almost want to make it 10. It Even 10. But, yeah. More consistent, maybe. I don't know. That's up to... I think we uh, did a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... We're bringing the relevant talk news. Talk to us nine episodes ago. I don't know. Yeah. The first ones definitely got some feedback. The first three to four were a little uh, test runs. You know what would be good? <laughs> <laughs> Is if we ran through all the articles at one point. Oh, like, that's actually a like good we, idea. Maybe every 10. You yeah. go through, and you, you don't even have to say much. You just say the, what Every the article was, yeah. you know, and kind of like a quick recap. Yeah. You'd see how it goes, how yeah. the, what the headlines are saying. Well, Anyways. it's interesting because we talk about all the articles that we've talked about, but two weeks later, and then we're like, oh, that came to fruition, or we talked about it, and it didn't. And I'll start with agents gear up for a turbulent 2023. Yikes. Catches the eyeballs. Of course, is one of the top ones. A lot of agents are in that mindset, and this is why. And they provided some nice data. <laughs> Medium days on the market, almost a month more. Price decreases. In other words, the amount of listing prices going down has jumped 20%. Mortgage rates almost doubled. Bidding wars are down 23%. Anyone that's been through a mar market cycle, so those are the, the, you know, it's from Redfin and everything else. An agent that has been through this understands that they have to put in more effort. So this is really more about the agents that either you work with or their positivity or the way that they list the home. Everyone wants the highest price, but a lot of agents are getting all this information from real estate sources and it's how you really deal with it. Do you bring it to the listing presentation and you present this stuff that clearly shows you know, we have to adjust the price or we can't list this high or we rent it out or, you know, there has to be other options. So what do you hear as an agent? <laughs> you see that as a title and then you hear obviously the data. Yeah, well, you know, it can't get much more turbulent than 2022. So here we are at the end of, you know, of the year, everybody starts coming up with their predictions. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's pretty easy to say, oh yeah, it was turbulent in 2022, so it's gonna be turbulent in 2023. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody... How, how does an agent actually say, hear that? Say, how do, you, how do you think the average agent hears that? And then how do you actually hear that? Like uh, the statistics that I just said. Uh, I would say that it, <laughs> some of those numbers seem low. Yeah. Uh, besides doubling mortgage rates, I mean, well, if you look across America, it's a little bit you different. You know what? I'd if you look in market, market, it's a little, you know. That is the uh, biggest stat that jumps out to me is doubled mortgage rates from one year ago. And what would you expect from that? Turbulence. Yeah. So here we are or a year uncertainty. later. Yeah. Is the mortgage rate going to go from 6.3 to 12? No. No. So is there going to be as much turbulence because of rising mortgage rates? No. Yeah. So I would say that this year is much more of like a leveling off. Yes, yeah, stabilization. Know, stabilization, yeah. not turbulence. Yeah. So, you know, after you're rocking around in a turbulent flight, then, yeah. you know, it settles down. And so. really the only reason it's turbulent is because it went down. That's it. All the metrics show the pricing went down and things like that. But I was actually thinking about this this morning, gearing up for this, no pun intended, agents gearing up. And it's like, when it's a good market, good market, it's actually a seller's market. Right. And right now is a buyer's market and they call it a bad market. So if I was a buyer, I would be like, well, actually it's a great market to buy. I have the money. And these are the people that have been sitting on cash since 2020 and they're like, this isn't sustainable. And then they come in and they make their money. Yeah. That's how it is. Or they just saved and this and that. You know, that reminds me. I, you know, in real estate, you meet buyers and sellers, sellers who hit the right time of the cycle. Yeah. And then you find ones that never hit the right time of the cycle. Yeah. And we were at a, you know, family dinner and we were recalling that one of our family members always complains about being on the wrong side of the cycle. 
you know, these are seven year cycles. Yeah. So somebody, you know, who got caught always buying at the top yep. and selling at the bottom yep. on every single house. Because remember, these houses are just basically like consumer items. Yeah. So you need a place to live. And some people get caught in these like parts of the cycle that it makes it, you know, very tough for them. Yeah. Other people, it's like uh, music to your ears when you meet these sellers and they're like, yeah, I did well on that house. Yeah. I did well on that house. Like every yeah. time that they ended up buying, it was at the bottom of the cycle. And every time that they sold, it was in a seller's market. Yeah. So it's just funny when you hear that, like I would say opportunity. You know, yeah. If you're it's a, a buyer, great opportunity. if you're a first time buyer, yeah. this is your chance to get in on the right side of a cycle. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just emailed someone that she renewed her lease last year which was a great time to do it, to be honest, even though she would have gotten a lower interest rate. And now she's going into uh, way more, less competition on the buy side, uh, you know, depressed on pricing. You know, I, I'm telling her right now, like buy, you know, if it's a stabilization, you know, there's a, you can't ever time the bottom and you can't ever time the top. The only time you could time it is when it's behind you and you're like, oh, that was actually the bottom or, oh, that was actually the top. So yeah. yeah. Well, and you make you your go. money on the purchase price. Yeah, that is always hundred percent. Yeah, so is now a good time to get a good yep. purchase price? Yes, <laughs> I hear it all the time. It's you know we'll go to yours after, but I hear it all the time. They're like, oh, they got lucky. No, they didn't. The buyer didn't get lucky. They're like, I can't believe they're making so much profit. I want to offer or less. I'm like, well, they bought at the right time and they're selling it at the right time. That's not luck. That's where a lot of people have trouble selling at the right time. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, this is a good article. Okay, good. Uh, my second one, okay. All right. Do you want to go to the second one first? <laughs> uh, kind of, <laughs> okay, but let's... I'm going to just stick with this one. Manhattan and Brooklyn rents flatten after record surge. Okay. Didn't think I would be saying that in 2022, but maybe I did. Yeah. And here we are at the end after a record surge in rentals. Yeah. And it's funny because you look back on 2021 and all of this year, everybody was like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The rents are so competitive. Like everybody's getting bid up. These are higher rents than we've ever paid. And you know, pre even pre COVID and nobody saw it stopping, slowing yeah. down. Yeah. I would say that this is a finally remember, remember speaking of news months ago, they were talking about how the median price for an apartment was at the high, Yeah. the highest it's ever been. Yeah. So now it's flattening out. Uh, I would say that it's a bit of a trap, actually, to start renting. Yes, you get a better rent, but historically, they're still very high. Yeah, so what is the right high. thing to do yeah. is to save your money and purchase. Yeah. You know, uh, buying versus renting is probably better than it ever has been. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things that you... We kind of talked about it, is that there was a huge influx of people that have never lived in New York City that got 30 to 50% below what it would normally be during COVID because nobody was here. Everyone was in Florida. They were working from home. They didn't need to be in the office. So they got rid of their lease. Then they flooded back to the city and they're like, oh wait, there's nothing available. And that just drove all the pricing up. And ironically enough, personally, I think the people that moved here that have never been here and they were here at you know crazy low pricing are the ones that moved away. You know, they, they, so now it's kind of the New Yorkers who work here or enjoy their time here. So I can't see it going lower by a lot, if at all, but I can definitely see why it's stabilized. You know, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this is the biggest thing. We actually talked about this last week in regards to home builders. So home builders, they're actually transitioning from sales to rentals so a home builder will put together a condominium and instead of getting the best price or the best materials the best everything and then selling it at a crazy price they it just didn't make sense and the reason being is because of labor and supplies have gone up where there's no profit so they went to rentals so this is very interesting this is from hud and the united states uh census bureau is that there was a six percent rise in new home sales so it's very ironic because we were actually talking with an owner. So month over month, new home sales have went up. So new home sales are usually more expensive and- Like new construction. New construction. Right. 
But we were talking about they were building rentals, that the trend was to rentals instead of sales because they, they couldn't make a profit. So it's very interesting that HUD and the Census Bureau came out that it was a 6% rise in sales, new construction sales. We were talking to someone who bought land in 2020 and she's building right now in Florida. That's a perfect example. You know, it's a new home. You know, it could be, say, a new home where it's an individual home or it could be a subdivision where there's many homes. But I saw in uh, on Long Island a subdivision going up where it was like an, it was like an old uh, country club that they converted into housing. So those are new home sales. So it will be interesting to see that trend. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> new home I would sales. Say that, In uh, New York City, it's very different than the rest of the country when it comes to new home sales. It'll be interesting if they start building all these rentals that uh, if you know, in a couple of years from now, we're talking about the conversions into condos. Yeah. You know, and like they did in the financial district. And it's interesting that you mentioned that, yeah. you know, quality wise, because maybe, you know, at a certain point, you're better off buying than renting, but the quality of the home is, you know, not what it used to yeah. be. Yeah, hundred percent. There is a major difference in rental buildings as opposed to kind of buildings. Well, that's kind of funny that you say that because this article is can NYC office, can NYC incentivize office to re res residential conversions again? Let me say that again so it sounds. A <laughs> Please. <better. laughs> can NYC incentivize office to residential conversions again? So, quick answer is, is yes. Yes, of course they can, and they will. And yeah. they are trying to come up with the right budget for it on how they can incentivize turning some of these commercial spaces and converting it into residential. I would say that everybody is kind of talking about that. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I was meeting Such with a, a big seller recently, and that's what they were talking about. Everybody yeah. is mentioning, like, wow, there is uh, low-hanging fruit. Yep. There isn't enough residential in New York City, so how are they going to get it? They're going to take some of these old office buildings and convert it. And, you know... To make the numbers work, just like you mentioned, maybe the quality is going to go down a little bit. Ironic, <laughs> ironically enough, just to throw this in, is that probably the most expensive thing is actually getting approved for the building, the plans, the engineering, the architecture, right. and putting up the building. Right. So the conversion is way less expensive. It's yeah. already existing. Yeah. You know, Wouldn't the plumbing, the electrical. Imagine if the developers out there that are... They are hungry for yeah, this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And is if they become the one who does it best, yeah. I mean... They're going to make a killing. Yeah, because New York City is going to bless you and yeah. say, oh, yeah, yeah we'll easily Tax, make credits. this conversion and yep. you can do whatever you need to do. Uh, well, and if, you can do it at the least amount of money. <laughs> yeah, they did it in the financial district. And the financial district had, I think it was 10,000 people around 2009. By the time it was 2015, it was like 60, 60,000. Wow. So it... It 5 x the amount, and it was because of all these buildings that they couldn't come back after 9-11, so they converted it. And then we're actually in Midtown on 42nd Street, and there's buildings that are completely empty, and they're 40, 50 stories. Yeah. You know, they're gigantic footprints in Midtown. And I would have to say, not on a negative no note. Don't go there, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, another part of the news is that nobody's going back into the office. Yeah. And they're talking about the struggles of commercial real estate. Well, this is a gift for the commercial real estate owners in New York City, yeah. where they can work with the New York State and the government here to, you know, provide housing. It's like do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna. Well, be I think really... it's across. It's Silicon Valley. San Francisco is going to have conversions. I think LA is going to have conversions. Anywhere where there is a large populace that's expensive to live in. And they just moved to Arizona, Utah, you know, places where they didn't need to be in the office. New York yeah. City is a perfect example. You know, you don't need to be there in a lot of the financial sector. You know, sales maybe, but uh, I, I think there will be a resurgence maybe in five years, but it's going to be smaller offices. It's not going to be yeah. gigantic. You know, we have 30 floors. I mean, we're in this WeWork today. Granted, it's between Christmas and New Year's, but there's no one here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're the only ones giving you the news. Yeah. Uh, I would also say that it is incredible that nobody understands, but it is a testament to New York that uh, people who still work from home 
want to live in New York City. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of people that moved out and went to the suburbs and started their families. They got more space. They drive a car now. There's so many people that moved in, younger generation, they don't even have to go into the office. Yeah. I would say they're willing to go in the office. They're accepting the hybrid version. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they still want to live in New York City. Yeah. They're still willing to pay sky high rents yeah. to live in New York City. Yeah. So that really says, you know, the lifestyle here yep. is not like, you know, well, listen, it's very attractive. <laughs> I was on Long Island. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's very guess, different. It is not. of the evils. Oh my gosh. I was there and I said, you know, just the driving and everything else, I could just see all these young people that come out of college and they need to experience New York City for at least three to four years, five years, whatever. Um, before moving to or staying outside of the city, you know, say Hoboken, I know Jersey City is very popular, Weehawken, uh, West New York, all along the Hudson on the Jersey side is just exploding. And, uh, you know, I bike around there and there's new properties going up every, because it's just, yeah. it's less taxes, they got a better view, they got more, more space and things like that. So it'll be very interesting. You know what would be nice, just to wrap this up, yeah. is if your Did office faced Times Square. Wow. Then we could come here and have a little bottle of Martinelli's <laughs> sparkling cider on uh, New Year. Bring well, in yeah. 2023. Exactly. I'll be the only one here. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, listen, there's number nine. And in the uh, books. yes, exactly. And any, uh, any articles you want us to talk about, send it over. And we're definitely going to be uh, hitting it hard. At least the first four are going to be by myself while uh, Mr. Bottomley. I think that to, needs to uh, be a whole separate section. You better not do that. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to mess it up. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to take it over. Bon voyage. Exactly. <laughs>